Welcome everyone. My name is Ket, K-E-T Ket. I'm the co-founder of Coducat. Okay, just a short introduction, especially um, I think we have quite a number of people who are new tonight. So um, Coducat um, is actually me and my wife. My wife is Cordelia. So um, Cordy for short and I'm Ket. So together we're known as Coducat. And we've been teaching and providing services related to subtle energies and spirituality since 2010. So um, we do stuff like energy readings, energy healing. We even have our very own energy healing modality, which we call infinity healing. Right. Um, the more normal kind of stuff that we do is we teach people stuff like Qigong. We have our very own Qigong called Unity Qigong. Um, also meditation, right? We have our own proprietary meditation, um, one of which is called light meditation. Okay, so, um, and we teach and share stuff about spirituality and subtle energies. So um, tonight is one of the, those nights whereby um, once a month, I will be speaking about a topic related to subtle energies or spirituality. And tonight's topic is about tarot and oracle cards, all right? So um, um, before you all go ahead and ask your questions, I hope uh, you will give me time to share with you all what I know about tarot and oracle cards. All right, then if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat function to type your questions. All right, I'm sure you can find the uh, chat function, look for it. Um, and I will address the questions when I am done sharing with you all uh, what I um, know about tarot and oracle cards. Now, um, in case you don't know what um, tarot and oracle cards are like, okay, let me just show you. Um, uh, you know, tarot cards is um, they are used for like predictive readings usually, okay, like oracle card, oracle card readings or tarot card readings. Um, you go to a tarot card reader, okay, this is like a set. So you've got the words there, T A R O T, um, supposed to be pronounced tarot. Uh, if I'm not wrong, okay, so it's a deck of cards. It's not like your normal um, poker cards. Right, it's got a lot of pictures, right, a lot of pictures. Um, so you've got, okay, like this card is called the Fool, um, Empress, and you've got stuff like, um, these are the swords. Uh, can you see this? I'm not sure whether can you see. Okay, it's some sword. Uh, so different, different cards, these are, um, so they've got cups and so on and so forth. So it's kind of like, a, uh, illustrated kind of cards and your, the reader is supposed to help pick the cards and try to do a predictive um, or you know a predictive reading for you it's kind of like a, a reading into the future reading into unknown you have a question right so typically people have a question uh, usually you know about life love money career right um, situations they find themselves stuck in okay so um tarot cards this is one set um what are oracle cards so our oracle cards are similar to tarot cards just that they come in many different types and forms i'll just show you uh, um, three types that we have um i have about like 10 different types okay i have like um so these are like three different types of decks so they go under go different names right and they have uh, basically they have um they're all illustrated with pictures usually pictures numbers um you see there's uh, on each card there's picture and, and uh, some words right picture words and sometimes even numbers okay so i'm just going to show you some all right and i'll put it back um, if you're really into this stuff i think you would have seen or uh, seen some of these okay just let me put back the cards i'll just show you a little bit Um, they said it's called earth magic. They, they are like uh, hundreds of kinds. So there are a lot of people into this. Um, I, you know, before I got into all this kind of stuff, I never knew there was so many different types of cards. So again, like uh, this set is called earth magic. So the theme is earth and magic. And so you put kind of a lot of words, for example, you know, this is, um, I'm not sure whether you can see, it says tsunami um, picture. And there's additional words called wake up call. 
you know, this is called full moon, uh, full moon card. Uh, it's additional commentary completion with moon and tree. Um, so yes, yeah, you can see it's illustrated some words over there. Let me show you one more deck. All right. Um, can't show you everything that we have. Okay, because we've got too many different types. So um, uh, this this is quite a good deck. So some people like a deck that has um, um so we will have a number, a number illustration and words. So um, how does it work? Um, how to use it and all this? I will share with you all shortly. All right. So um, basically, you go to the reader. The reader usually um that means oracle card reader or tarot card reader um there are actually two ways right either you pick the cards or the oracle card reader the card reader will pick the cards right i think a lot of times it's the card reader pick the cards uh um sometimes they will ask you to pick your cards all right hang on let me put back the cards properly my apologies huh? okay now so um basically um most people go to such card readers is trying to know about the future know about the unknown and hoping that the cards can give answers because uh, you've probably heard that oh um so and so tarot card reader or oracle card reader is very good at what they do and the reading seems very accurate, very pertinent, and stuff like that. Okay, so um, I also wonder what's up, and I never knew all this until I you know, went on this um, journey to, to learn and explore the spiritual and the energy side of stuff. And uh, I was kind of, you know, I was kind of uh, really quite surprised with what I found there. Now, firstly, uh, anyone can buy uh, this type of cards, okay, especially nowadays, you can just buy online. All right, and uh, most of them comes with instruction books. All right, comes with instruction, uh, a, a booklet. There's a booklet inside that will teach you and uh, will even guide you on how to interpret the cards. Now, uh, if you are an amateur user, all right, you may not be very accurate at using it for predictions. All right, and uh, you know you find it's kind of hit and miss. And usually those who are very good are those who practice a lot and those who really know what is actually happening. Um, or maybe they have an idea of what is happening and they try to facilitate the process. But I would say, um, I think a lot of people, they don't actually know what is going on. So I will be, I'm here to share with everyone what is actually going on. Okay, when you're trying to do all these type of readings. Okay, so um, just to explain with you all the process, uh, usually you go to the reader, the reader has a different deck of cards. Um, to me, a tarot, you know, a tarot deck is just another type of oracle card. So all, all these are oracle cards, but the most famous is called the tarot, right? So tarot has uh, gained a reputation and uh, a lot of people use it. Um, if you ask me, I'm not a fan, you know, it's, uh, I don't really like tarot cards. I prefer some other kinds. I prefer um, oracle cards because, um, um, depending on the kind of question the client asks, I find that it's helpful. Okay, so um, normally you go to the session and um, somebody picks up the cards, it's either yourself or the tarot card, and then a number of cards will be placed. Sometimes the cards will be placed in a certain way, um, what we call the formation. All right, a certain way, a certain formation. And if you actually buy the Oracle cards, there will be instructions inside to teach you about basic formations. All right, they will teach you how to place the cards. Now, um, uh, let me say this. Okay, so um, if you're doing as an amateur, you just shuffle the cards, all right, and just pick the top three cards. Let's say um, there's one formation called a uh, three cards formation. Just be a very simple one. A three card formation. So um, um, let's say you go, uh, let's say you bought a deck of cards and you're just playing and maybe you follow the instructions. Even if you follow the instructions, it does not mean that you're actually doing real predictive stuff. All right, so uh, one of the examples, a very simple example is you shuffle the cards, right? And you pick up the top three cards or you just pick up any three cards, right? And you're supposed to place it one, two, three, all right? And um, this three card formation is usually the one of the most basic one. 
The first card is about the past. The second card is about your present, and the third card is about your future. All right. Um. So you, this is the, sim the most simple uh, three card formation. Uh, they have a cross formation, uh, all kinds of formation, uh, depending on how many cards. And um, if you come to us, Cordelia and myself, we generally do a free form. Free form that means there's no fixed formation. We we find out the number of cards, and then uh, we find out the formation is supposed to be. We don't have a fixed formation because um, yeah, you will understand why when I explain how we do it. Okay. So now, uh, so that was the formation. Uh, the main thing is the big question here is this: How can it be possible for some cards, right? Some cards and inanimate objects, right? Uh, through some random chance of shuffling and picking up cards, um, seem to be able to offer you advice or uh, divine into the future or something like that. Uh, if you really think about it, it doesn't make sense because these are just cards. These are just um, you know, made of paper, right? It's, it, it has no consciousness, so, um, but you shuffle it and yet it's supposed to be able to give you answers. It doesn't make sense, all right? Um, I mean, that's from a logical and scientific point of view, right? It's not supposed to be able to do that. But if you go to a lot of these Oracle card readers and, um, and uh, Tarot card readers, you will see that they treat their cards with utmost respect. Um, it's, you know, normally they even have an altar place there, you know, where um, um, they, they might burn some incense, they might do prayers uh, before starting. Some do, some don't. Right, and they treat it, they put it, they treat it very well. Um, ours is a bit better, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, because um, there is a belief, and there's a kind of belief that you know, um, the cards themselves may have uh, for some, okay, for some they believe it may have a spirit or some uh, energy inside that's helping with the reading, and you need to treat it well, right, if you want to get good readings out of it. So, you have all kinds of beliefs. In this, uh, in this field, okay? So what exactly is happening, I'm just gonna share with you all. Now, um, so um, for some of you, you have been following me um, for some of these talks and you, you know, I roughly um, share a little bit about the spiritual side of stuff, okay? So um, one of the things that is happening is actually um, the Oracle card reader is supposed Okay, through the process of card picking, okay, the card picking is not supposed to be random. If you get random, if it's truly random, right, then your readings will be off. Right, your readings will be off if it's truly random, right? But um, you know, someone can always weave the story to make it uh, seem applicable. But if it's truly random, how can it fit into your question? All right. So how can we remove the randomness? So the key thing is there is not supposed to be any randomness. We we don't want any randomness. And the card readers are supposed to understand that, and they understand there's supposed to be a kind of mechanism for the card reading to happen. So um, typically. You go to a card reader, all right? So, so let's say this is the card reader, CR, card reader. And uh, you have a client. All right, so this is the client, CL, client. Now the card reader, the card reader understands what we are trying to do is to connect with the spiritual realms, connect with the divine, connect with the spiritual realm, and try to get answers from the spiritual realm. That it is only possible to know the unknown through the spiritual realm or through the invisible or energy realms. All right, and uh, the, the 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 cards, the cards are just a medium. All right, and an intermediary um, medium to help facilitate the passing, uh, to facilitate messages to be passed from the spiritual realm to 
us, right? So using this and the process of picking out the cards is actually, I would say, one of the most important things to do. So if you just anyhow pick, you know, if you go to a card reader, ask you to shuffle, you just anyhow shuffle and you just, you know, pick all the cards that are at the top. I can guarantee you then you're just, you know, you're not trying, uh, you're not able to connect with the spirits, the spiritual realm in order to pick up something that would be meaningful for whatever questions you're asking for, whatever answers you're looking for. All right. So now the main thing is this. Uh, usually what they ask you to do is to shuffle and follow your intuition. If the card reader asks you to, to, to pick the cards, the card reader asks you to shuffle and follow your intuition and pick up the cards. Uh, usually a lot of the times, um, most card readers understand and they know that the clients are not trained to follow the intuition. So the card readers will ask you to shuffle, right? Ask you to shuffle the cards and the card reader will have the intuition, will have the practice to pick up the cards, all right? Um, and of, um, the only problem with this is we know that some people are very good with cards. Maybe they can play tricks. So, um, so maybe they are doing so, but usually um, for the card reader to remove the uncertainty, don't want the client um, um, to anyhow pick up and not pick up the right cards. Usually they ask you to shuffle and they pick up the cards. Now, so uh, what the card reader does is this. So actually, the card readers usually understand that it's a spiritual thing, all right? And uh, they will have their own um, process and preparation, okay? So they will have their own process and preparation. And usually the belief is this, that they're connected to the spirit guides, all right? They're connected to spirit guides. Okay, uh, usually the Spirits are connected to the head, all right, uh, this red. Um, so imagine it's a good spirit connected, like angel, right, connected, and then uh, will give signal to the card reader what kind of cards to pick, all right? And then uh, in response to the client's question, this is usually the case, all right? And usually the, the card reader will have some kind of process, a prayer, uh, invocations or whatever, and to help find out. And the understanding is this, okay? Um, so um, the thing is this, okay, whatever I'm explaining to you all is my understanding of how it works. And I think some or most of the card readers are aware of this, but they may not be aware of everything. Okay, so this is what I and Cordelia, um, uh, what we are aware of. Now, usually this process is not so simple. So, um, um, with everybody, we are supposed to have our spirit guides and protectors. So we are supposed to have spirit guides and protectors. All right. So um, there has to be communication. So there are communication on two levels, right? So between the client and the card reader, there's communication, right? So the client explaining to the card reader what kind, you know, why I'm looking for, you know, why I'm coming for card reading and everything. Right, and then um, the card readers, uh, guys will will have some communication with each other, right? So that because um, because this guy is with the card reader, this guy wouldn't know what the client wants, uh, what kind of messages the client needs to hear, right? But this guy will know. So there will be some communication here, so that the card reader can pick up the cards and pick up some information to relay to the client, all right? This is the rightful scenario, rightful scenario, all right? Now, uh, this scenario has uh, some problems, all right, some problems because this scenario usually assumes that everyone are guided by spirits of light, all right? The red represents spirits of light. Um, the truth is, um, it's not always so. All right, it's not always so. And when you don't do the card readings the right way, you might end up having some uh, funny experiences. So um, uh, let me share with you some experience, uh, a story, a, a real experience. Okay, the experience is, uh, is of someone who's actually attending, um, yeah, she's attending tonight's session. Okay, and um, so I'm about to share her story. 
um, um, she told me her story of between her and her then best friend, what happened when they tried to do a tarot card reading uh, by themselves. Okay, I think they were playing around with tarot cards and they, um, they were roommates. Okay, they were roommates. This is like something happened a long time ago, 20 years ago, I think she said. Um, um, so they were roommates and they were playing around with tarot cards and it came to us, you know, they were uh, about to go to bed, I think. Uh, so we played and then the thing was, they pulled the death card. All right, so if, um, in, in, in the tarot deck, there is one card called death. And when they pulled the death card, it was like the atmosphere felt very eerie and they just like, you know, uh, I mean, they just didn't feel good and they decided to end the tarot card reading session. All right. And they went to bed and somehow, if I remember the story correctly, I, um, I heard this story, I think maybe eight or nine years ago. Okay. So um, it made a very deep impression. on me. Um, so I hope I got the details right. If I get it wrong, okay, the person who's here, you can private message me. <laughs> All right, if any details are wrong. So basically, um, they decided to go to bed early because they got spooked up, spooked up by the death card. And um, I think both of them decided because there was a death card, they want to play it safe. They uh, hit all the nice and sharp things like scissors that were in their room and you know they just lock it away. I don't know, you know they just got some bad vibes all right and they went to bed and uh, it seems that if i if i remember correctly so they went to bed so she went to bed and in the middle of night she kind of woke up and she saw her roommate set up on the bed and she you know she just like watched and and she got kind of spooked out, but nothing happened. The, you know, her, her roommate went back to bed. And I think after a while, maybe the next day or day after, they talk about it. And, you know, they, they, they just common suspicions. They just didn't feel all right. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. So uh, I didn't get some of the details right. So, um, um well the person if you really want to share uh, please let me know all right um so um they didn't feel so good okay they didn't feel so good and they decided to uh, not touch the, the tarot card readings uh, after that the tarot cards um this is the gist that i remember but apparently that i got uh, i got uh, some details off okay my apologies i heard this story like 10 maybe eight nine ten years ago i can't remember Okay, now um, the thing is this. Um, so these two ladies, I've, I've met them. Okay, I've met both these two ladies. I've met uh, both these two ladies. Uh, these two ladies are sensitive to energies and and uh, spirits. So basically, this <laughs> this person is uh, private messaging me and saying that her story has much more drama. Yes, it's definitely much more drama. I can't remember the details because I've got so many stories in my head uh, from real people. Okay. Um, so um, now the main gist is this, they could feel um, vibes, energies, and even spirits. So these two people are that sensitive and they felt that they connected to something not good that night through the tarot cards and um, the, that the reading, the card that they picked that says death is like really a bad omen kind of thing. And so that's why they, you know, uh, they hit the knives and stuff like that, and they didn't want anything to go wrong. Just like they got very bad feeling, okay. And uh, I think the the roommate didn't like wake up in the middle of the night, or maybe she didn't see something like that. Anyway, okay. Um, the gist of it is they felt they connected to some spirit, some bad thing, and they both got bad vibes, okay. So um, the truth is, if you are playing with tarot cards and oracle cards. All right, um, there is an implicit understanding with, um, for the spiritual realm that you're trying to connect with them because you're trying to know the unknown. You're trying to know the unknown. And some people know it, that when they're using all this, all these cards, they're trying to connect with the spiritual realm for answers. All right, so there is an implicit understanding. 
And if you play these cards and you don't do uh, some of the necessary things, you really end up connecting with some spirits and you don't know what kind of spirits you are connecting to. All right. So, um, so what I'm trying to sh share with you is what I just shared on the board. In fact, is the ideal situation. So the ideal situation is ideal situation, card reader connected to light, client connected to light, and then you're able to get a decent reading, assuming the card reader knows all, all his or her stuff. All right. Now, um, the truth of the matter is, it's not always clear, right? Usually, uh, a lot of people who come for card readings, they are down in luck. They are, you know, um, um, going through a tough time, bad luck period, right? Uh, very negative, right? And when you're very negative, your energies are negative, and there could be a significant higher chance that you are actually not just connected to light, but you're also connected to the dark. Okay, something dark is connected to you. All right, and now, if now I'm giving you this scenario whereby as, we assume the card reader to be of light. All right, now, and um, the thing is this if the card reader is of light, but if the card reader does not know how to tell whether the client is connected to light or dark, and just try to get messages from, from uh, the, you know, your guide, from the client's guide. But sometimes, sometimes what the card reader does is they try to get a direct communication. All right, they try to get a direct communication. Um, so let me use a different color. So, so ideally, you get direct communication from the guide of light, but if the card reader is not able to differentiate what kind of spirit or what kind of guides you have, then you might end up, the card reader might end up communicating with a dark spirit that is with you, and the kind of answers that you're given will not be in your highest interest, will not be you know, will not be something good for you. You get what I mean? Which is kind of like what happened to the, uh, the story earlier, right? The story earlier I was sharing with you, the two, you know, there were two girls playing with the tarot cards and they, they picked up the death card and they really got very bad vibes that something bad might happen, all right? Because they connected probably to some dark spirit and the dark spirit is trying to send them a message that, you know, I'm here and I'm going to give you trouble kind of thing all right so so this one scenario that can go wrong this is very typical because a lot of clients they when they go to the card reader they are very negative and if you're negative you attract negative stuff so um and if the card reader does not know his or her stuff they may be getting a message from the dark spirit and then the card reading may not be accurate or may will not be for you know will not be for will not be good for you now, the other scenario that can go wrong is when the card reader himself or herself is connected to the dark. Now, if the card reader is connected to the dark, end of story, right? So all the things will not be in your interest. Whether you're connected to the dark or you're connected to the light, and because it's the card reader doing the reading, so basically everything cannot really be trusted or it's not in your best interest, all right? So, um... Now, having said this, card readers are card readers are supposed to know this, um, especially those of the older generations. Right, or those of the older generations, they are supposed to treat this uh, card reading um, very seriously. You're supposed to do prayers, or right? you're supposed to meditate to prepare for it because you are connecting to the spiritual realm and you need to know what you're connecting to. Um, but nowadays, everything is very commercialized, okay? Everything is very commercialized. Um, nowadays, you get a, you know, you buy a set of um, cards. It comes with a, you know, user book, pretty thick, teach you how to do it yourself, you know. Um, don't talk about tarot and oracle cards. You can even buy a puja board, right? 
they can even buy the Uja board, the spirit, you know, the spirit board. Um, it's so as a children's toy. Oh my God, I don't know what are those people thinking about, right? Um, supposed to help you communicate with the spirits, but they're selling it as a toy for children, right? Crazy. So, so uh, everything's very commercialized. People don't really believe in spirits and all that anymore. So uh, it becomes a problem, right? Because anybody is going to do it and you don't know what you're connecting with. And there are people who have nasty experiences from card reading. Okay, uh, that was just one example. So there are others. Okay, so um, so let me share with you how Cordelia and I do it. Um, but but just to be clear, we don't really do that many uh card readings nowadays. You know, but we do do, and uh, in our infinity program, so we have our own energy healing modality, we train people to do the kind of things that we do. And uh, normally by um, the sixth module, the sixth module is called working with spirit guides and protectors. That's where we teach people how to work with the spirit guides and protectors. And one of the things that we, we will be teaching in the sixth module, and that's the sixth module, um, how to use oracle cards and tarot cards properly. All right. And uh, why sixth module? Because um, of course we have lots of things to learn. We need to learn the basics about energy and you know, basis for energy, you need to learn how to protect yourself, you need to learn how to heal yourself, right, um, um, and so on, before you actually try to do this, because um, we are aware of what's happening, we are aware that you're actually trying to make contact with the spiritual realm, so um, before you actually get there, you need to be prepared before you get there, whereas most people that teach um, oracle card readings, um, I hear that you know yeah, you can pay a few thousand to, or maybe some is just very cheap, right? Maybe a few hundred and to learn it. And um they don't have uh, I don't think they take uh, they approach it as seriously as we do. So what we do is this um for us as a card reader, if you come to um uh, if you come to my session or Cordelia session, this is what we do. First of all, we have our own preparation to ensure that we are connected to life and we know how to differentiate whether we are connected to light or connected to something that is not of light. Okay, so uh, we learn how to differentiate energy. We can tell whether the entities that are in the, in the space is good or bad. Okay, and we will make sure that we are only connected to light and when you come to our place or when we go to your place when we're doing the reading, there are no evil spirits or dark spirits that are nearby that will mess up the reading. That is what we do. Okay, so uh, typically our process, um, just to share with you all, we will include um, our own preparation, we will include doing Unity Qigong and Light Meditation, all right, as a preparation. That is one of the basic foundations. And um, this is our own internal practice that we share with people. We have a free class every month, all right. So we will do um, Unity Qigong and Light Meditation. So with Light Meditation, we strengthen our light and ensure that we're connected to light and only light is in our space. And when the client comes, right, um, even if the client has a dark entity with him or her, we will make sure that the dark entity will not be part of the reading. We have no say in the reading. And we will seek out this person's spirit, um, guide of light, all right, spirit guide of light. And we will communicate directly with the spirit guide of light. You know, it's this way and this way in order to do the readings for the client. Um, normally the way I do it is I get the clients to pick up the cards. Okay, so um, I understand that people who are very suspicious, they might think that I'm trying to pull, you know, I'm a card trickster or something. So, okay, I get in the shuffle and I make sure that if you come with a, a dark spirit, I will push it aside, I will reconnect you with your spirit of light so that you will pick up the cards and I will teach the client how to pick up the cards, not randomly, all right? You will pick up the cards in a way but whereby you know that those cards are meant to be picked, all right? If you come for a session, we'll get, it, or we'll, I'll get you to reach out for the cards and you will feel a certain sensation and you know that card is the card, not the, not the card on the left, not the card on the right, but that particular card. And you, usually, you will be able to know and sense it. Most of my clients are able to do that, all right? So they will pick up the cards 
Um, normally the way I do it is uh, I will get the reading, I will know how many cards you're supposed to pick up based on your question, okay, based on different decks that I use. Give you the number, I'll get you to pick up the number of cards. After that, I will double check with the spirit guide whether it's the right cards have been picked. And uh, normally for me, what I do is uh, I will get the clients to pick up the cards and not to open them. That means I put them face down, all right? Ask them to place it face down, all right? And then I will, um, so Cordelia and I, we do it free form, all right? So based on, let's say, um, let's say they are, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six cards. So um, the, you, know, you pick up six cards, I told you six cards, you pick up six cards. Then uh, the next thing is I'm going to try and see and get talk to the guy what kind of formation you want to form with these six cards, all right? And then uh, maybe the guy would say, oh, I want three at the bottom, three at the bottom, two, two in the middle, and one on top, all right? So a three layer, right? And um, so um, and what I will do is so they're supposed to be. Let's say I'm just giving you an example, huh? I'm just giving you an example. So it says that there's supposed to be six cards. So it's supposed to place, place this way. One, two, three. All right. So what I normally do is I will take out the cards and I will, without, without a flipping, I will try to see this card. Is it supposed to go here, here, or here, 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 or here? You know, I will be able to get a message from the guy to say, okay, this one goes here, so on and so forth, right? I will put it up here and then I will flip it and then the message will be quite clear, right? There's a direction of reading either from top down or you know, top down, bottom up or left, right, whatever, right? Uh, but it will tell a story, right? it will pass the message that is relevant to you. This is normally how I usually do it, all right? So the whole process is, um, we have to ascertain that we are connected to light, you know, all along the way that um, even when the client picks up the card, it's not by random, okay, not by random, you we'll make sure you're connected to light and that you will be guided to pick out the right cards and we are in communication with your guys all the way for what kind of formation, you know, let's say with this formation, okay, um, and um, the placement of the cards then at the end, you will pick it up and there will be a message. So this is the way we do it. Okay. Um, so um, not necessarily other card readers will know or they will do it this way, but that this is the way we do it because we understand that the process involves communicating with the spiritual realm. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to type. I will be taking a look at your questions. So, um, Evans asking, I asked on behalf of a friend, I was told those who frequently use tarot cards, especially female, they hardly can get married because the spirit in the cards need companion. Um, so I hope you all understand this. Um, there's not supposed to be any spirit in the cards. All right. Um, um, the thing is, can there be a, end up be a spirit attached to the cards? Yes. So for some people, they, are, they don't know what they're doing, okay? Or they think there is a spirit, but there can be a spirit, okay? They make no doubt there can be spirit with the cards that is guiding. But um, for us, we are very clear that the cards are not supposed to have spirits. Cards are not like humans. They're supposed to have soul and spirit, all right? If there's any spirit, that means it has come from an external source, a source that's not supposed to be there. The main... The ones who are supposed to have spirits, it should be the guides and the guides should be with the people. All right, or divine. Divine that comes through prayers, right? That come by when you uh, request them to come and ask for a message. All right, otherwise the cards are not supposed. So, um, and yes, so they, they end up people who, um, you know, they work with all the, the cards and they end up um, working with something dark and uh, it affects their life. It affects the card reader's life. So um, um, we treat it as something serious. So for us, when we train card readers, right, uh, that's why we don't teach card reading until the sixth module. 
right? Because we understand that it actually involves working with the spiritual realm. Okay. Um, Evelyn is also saying the accuracy of the tarot cards uh, prediction can only last around nine months. Is that true? No, no, uh, not necessarily. It depends on what is the message that came. Um, I remember there's uh, one reading I did for a client and uh, I really remember it because I've never done that formation because she was asked to pick 12 cards. All right, she was asked to pick 12 cards and uh, you know, 12 cards is quite a lot. So she picked up 12 cards and I asked what is the formation and the formation was like clock, you know, so like the 12 digits of clock, so there's supposed to be 12. And um, so I, pay, I place, place, place all the cards and um, so basically uh, each card was to represent the theme of the next of the month of the month for one year all right of the month for one year um, i think i think it was um i think she came to see me in january it was a chinese new year it was a chinese new year reading so i think it was a, a january chinese new year right and so it was for the entire year so from january to december and I remember this client because the death card came up, if I'm not wrong, in one of the months. I think it was May. And um, true enough, her father passed away. Right? So, like, you know. So, uh, I mean, um, I'm not saying, like, uh, but it's, you know, it's not nice to be accurate in this type of things, but, you know, um, the thing is also this, uh, when we see death, it does not necessarily mean death of uh, real physical death. Sometimes it means death of ego, for example. Um, but I did remember, I did tell her there would be death in the family uh, or someone that she knows, okay, and it turned out to be a father. I think maybe by the time it wasn't a surprise, you know, but the timing was pretty spot on. Um, so whichever month it was, it happened that way. So uh, not necessarily for nine months. So it depends on the reading. So um, for example, some people are doing, so it depends on the client's questions. If the client asks, uh, I want to do a reading into like you know, really far. Um, but actually, of course, you do reading into very far future. The further that you do, the less accurate it can be because um, the um, future is never fixed. Okay, just to let you know, future is never fixed. All right, so uh, what kind of future will come to be depends on your actions and your decisions. That is the single biggest determinant. It's not your fate, it's not what is in the cards, it's not what is in your uh, astrology or your bhakti or any um, or any life reading or palmistry, it's not that. Okay, it's the biggest determinant, I always tell my client, is it's your free will, it's your decision, it's your actions. All right, um, Jen is asking, how true is tarot card reading and can one believe it? Um, it can be very accurate. It can be very accurate, especially when you are doing it right. Now, uh, sometimes even when the card reader or this person is connected to dark, can be, uh, it can be, it can have some accuracy. But usually the theme will be darker. All right, because even spirits of the dark side, they also can see some, uh, they can have some knowledge of the, uh, a little bit knowledge of the future. They cannot see much into the future. But uh, usually the spirits of the dark are very good at reading your past. Just to share a little based on my experience. The spirit of the dark uh, usually are very good at reading your past and uh, your current. Uh, reading the future not so good. Okay, usually reading the future is not so good. But if you really want to uh, know more about the future and all this, it's usually more the spirits of the light. Because spirits of the light, they can do everything. Okay. Um, and it's asking, card reader randomly pick cards from that they are shuffled by clients. No, the card reader will not. Actually, um, we, for example, we train our card readers to be able to feel what which card. In fact, if you come as a client for a card reader, uh, for a card reading, let's say you come for a card reading to me, I will, I will make sure all this is there and I will tell you how to feel for the card that you're supposed to pick. All right, and um, so I will make sure you're connected to light, the, the guides of light, the guides will, will be, um, so that when your hand reaches the card, you kind of get sensations on your hands or something like that. Or some people will, will be very drawn, the eyes will be very drawn and they know that card is the card that they need to take. All right. And uh, the main thing is to ensure for us, is to ensure that the client is connected to light. All right. So again, Edwin is asking, 
if one pick a bad card, um, can chanting help? All right. Um, so usually, if you are going for such a session, and like right now, you are aware that it's something spiritual, right? Uh, whether you're doing the card read, but you know whether you are the client or you want to do card reading yourself, um, we would we would highly advise you before you start the session, do your prayers, do chanting, you know, whichever religion you are. Do your prayers, or if you are you want really want to play safe, you go to a place of worship, you go to the church. You know, after you've done with your Sunday service, you stay back and you hide one corner, and then you do a card reading, for example. Or you go to the temple, you do your prayers and everything, and then you hide one corner and do it. Um, you know, as long as they don't mind you doing it there. All right. So um, so it's kind of safer because you know you want to be connected to spirits of light if you are doing the card reading yourself. Um, or similarly, if you're the client, you know, you are going to see a card reader, so you will want to pray and do your stuff before you go and see a card reader. You know, um, uh, bearing in mind that if you're really, really very negative, you could be, you know, you could have attracted some negative stuff to you and then the card reading will not go that well for you. Or if you have learned um, Unity Qigong and Light Meditation with us, you know, do enough Unity Qigong Light Meditation, you want to add on your prayers, you want to be, you know, they say, I do everything. The key is you want to make sure you're connected to light to do the reading. All right. So um, Kevin is asking if the card reader gives accurate reading of past and present, can you safely say the card reading is 100% connected to light? Um, no. Um, so like I said, um, the dark spirits can be very good at reading the present and the past. All right, so uh, accuracy about past and present does not mean accuracy about the future. All right, get better in mind. If you go to a reader, the reader is good at reading your past and your present. It does not mean that the reader can predict your future. And if, if you have understanding of the spirits of light and dark, usually the spirits of dark, they can read the past and the present, but they are not good at reading the future. Right. So, um, so spirits of light and dark can both read past and present, but to read the future better is usually the spirits of light. All right. So, um, if the card reader can tell you of your present and the past, it doesn't mean anything. It sounds impressive. It certainly would seem impressive, uh, but based on our knowledge, is no big deal. All right. It's no big deal because light or dark, they can tell you the same thing. Um, Evan is asking how many minimum and maximum number. Um, how many minimum and maximum number of tarot cards in a deck of cards? Uh, to be honest, so um, this tarot cards has 78, has 78 cards. Um, so different oracle, oracle cards will be different. Um, this one says here 54. Um, this here says 44. And this year says 48. And it doesn't matter, you can mix two decks, you can mix three decks, right? Of course, uh, I, I don't like mixing because you are, I just, just separate it out, you know. Um, but sometimes, yes, you, um, I've done readings here, but I use two decks, more than, more than one deck, right? So uh, it's possible. So um, the decks are not important because the decks is just like uh, to help get the message easier. Now, so for some people, they can connect with the spirit realm directly without needing oracle cards, right? You can just have a conversation. Some people can literally have a conversation with spirits. Then you don't even need the cards. All these cards are for people who can't, all right? Cards are for people who can't, and most people can't, right? Even a lot of psychics, they can't get a, you know, the, the connection is there, but the connection is not 100% crystal clear, right? There are not many people who have that kind of connection. So, um, so having the cut helps because it helps you narrow down, cut down the noise, it helps you to focus because there are words there, there, are, there could be words, there could be numbers, there could be a picture. And if you're Oracle card reader, you're being guided, you, you know, let's say you look, take a look at the picture and you know that the message is not in the lightning, but it's not in the lightning in the picture, or it's not in the words lightning, but it's in the word power. All right. So the guide will kind of tell you, okay, what I want to tell you has is related to the word power, all right? And you kind of get the gist because you kind of get some communication and you get it. The theme is power and you, it's easier for you to narrow down. You get what I mean? So it's kind of like that. 
No, because the communication for most people is not 100%. So um, the cards help to simplify and narrow down the message. John, uh, okay, let's see. Um, the next question is by uh, um, Selfang. Reader or client, no need to see all the cards in advance before the reading. Yeah, you don't need to see the cards. Yeah, you don't need to see the card. So like I was saying, um, um, the way I do it, the way I do it is, uh, you know, all the cards is all placed face down. You can't see the cards. I pick out the cards face down. Um, Selfang, I think you, I've done card reading for you, right? So uh, you, you, I think you will remember. And I've taught you uh, a little bit how to do. So the cards is face down. Um, I mean, I do it this way because it looks, uh, it's more legit. Uh, is it, um, you know, so that the client knows that I'm not, um, I'm not a card trickster. All right. So pick up the cards, the cards is face down, you know, then I find the formation. I move all the cards in the formation before I flip it open. Right. And, uh, you don't need to see all the cards in advance, right? You don't need to know that. The, of course, the card reader will know the deck very well, because if they do it for a living, they will know the deck very well. John is asking, can we determine which decks are considered to be connected to light or the dark to ensure like to ensure as light practitioner which we choose to choose the right deck to be used? Okay, so some some decks they have their own uh, energies and some decks are inclined to dark, some decks are inclined to light. Um uh, for us, you know, Codicats, we are we specialize a lot in energy. We don't care whether the deck is what kind of energy. So we cleanse it, uh, we amongst our preparation is we cleanse the energies of the cards and we ensure there are no spirits in the cards that are affecting the reading and we ensure the only spirits that are involved are the spirits that have a right to be there and are supposed to be there and are the ones who are supposed to pass the message no other spirits except these two main spirits of the client of the card reader are supposed to be there for the message or uh, in certain cases whereby, for example, some people would insist they want to do a prayer, they want to connect with certain divine for message, that is fine. So you can invite a divine, again, that would be of light. Um, of course, we do light. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe some people insist they want to connect with dark entities for message. It's possible. But for us, all light. All right. So, um, yes, you can determine, for example, um, those of us, Okay, um, those of those of you who are in Infinity Healing Program uh, from the um, fifth module onwards, you learn how to discern energies. You learn how to discern light from dark, and you can even discern what are illusion energies. Because uh, you might have heard me mention in past talks that evil spirits can pretend to be good spirits, right? Evil spirits can pretend to be good spirits, and how can you tell if it, you know you see light, but actually that is actually an evil spirit pretending to be of light? Just shining light or pretending to be an angel or you know one of the divine um it's, it's quite famous you know a lot of people know about this type of stuff it, it can happen so um so we train our those who are learning how to differentiate all right and not to be fooled by illusions and trickery kevin is asking can a tarot card reading be done online yes you can um so i do it um you know uh, for clients all around the world John is asking, does the deck of cards need to be cleansed before or after the reading? If yes, how do we do that? So, um, so um, you will learn how to do it properly um, in the Infinity Healing Program, so whereby we teach you how to do healing. Um, the thing is this, we don't anyhow teach people to do all this cleansing stuff um, like, like this online. It's dangerous. Can you imagine we just anyhow teach you and then you go and do and there's an evil spirit in the deck of cards. And you're trying to cleanse it and the evil spirit come after you then you get into trouble right we don't do that so in, in the immunity program right the first thing that you learn is a foundation course you learn foundation basics about energy then the second module that you learn is self-protection how to protect yourself properly right you learn how to protect yourself properly before you learn any other advanced stuff after you learn how to protect yourself properly you learn how to heal yourself in case you get into trouble with evil spirit or whatever or, or any energy stuff because you're into energy stuff you need to be able to heal yourself and after you learn how to heal yourself you learn how to heal others after you learn how to heal others you learn how to read energy and differentiate energy 
and you need to learn how to read energy and differentiate energy you don't learn that right at the start because if you learn how to read energy it means you learn how to identify evil spirits if you want to if you need to learn how to identify evil spirits first of all you must learn how to protect and heal yourself first does it make sense so um our program in immunity is very clear um it's very safe it's intended for everyone's safety so you know and only in module six you learn how to work with spirit guides and protectors and that's when um, all these oracle cards come in right so you, by the time you reach oracle cards you learn how to you learn how to cleanse heal protect and everything um and you are ready to uh, enter the world whereby you are making some contact with spiritual realm. okay so um everything uh, in its time please don't jump so um um you know, uh, I understand a lot of people want to learn how to cleanse, but I'm just telling you all, they can be dangerous. You are trying to cleanse if your level is it's not there, you don't know enough, right? And then you incur the anger, the wrath of some evil spirit, then it won't be fun. Okay. Um, Selfang is, uh, Selfang is saying better to read in a familiar place, location where where it's already safely with light. Otherwise, need to spend quite a lot of energy to cleansing the venue. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, you know, I did make a suggestion. Uh, if you all want to play safe, please do it in a place of worship, you know, after you've done some worship, some prayers. Okay. John is asking, how effective is distant tarot or oracle card reading compared to face-to-face? -to -face? Does distant tarot card reading require more energy? Yes, distance will require more energy because um, I will need to connect with the clients over distance. So I will charge more for distance. Right, so um, if you're in another country, I mean, if you're in Malaysia, you're not in front of me, but if you're in front of me, I will charge the base price. Um, just to share with your base price, it's just uh, 60 ringgit, right? 60 ringgit is about 100 renminbi. All right, some of you are from China, right? about 100 renminbi. Um, so, uh, but if you're in China, uh, you're some other country in Asia, then I will charge you 120 ringgit double. Okay, uh, but if you are not in front of me, but you're somewhere in West Malaysia, I will charge you 50% uh, extra. So instead of 60, it will be 90. So we, we kind of have a scale. But if you're very far away, then I will charge you triple the base price because I need to connect over the distance. It uses a lot more energy and uh, that's why we charge more. Okay, so um, and next time if you guys learn how to do it, those who learn how to do it, you understand why because you do use up a lot more energy. Okay, and it can be very tiring, especially if you are a beginner. So, um, so it's actually as effective just to use more energy. Okay, to answer your question, John. Uh, yes, yeah, Selvan says she remember cards are facing down. Uh, till now, I haven't still haven't seen all the cards because most of the time, all other cards I didn't pick are facing down. Yeah, I mean, if you're really, you know, um, to be honest, I don't. Um, I don't use the, the cards as much as Cordelia do. Cordelia trained with the cards a long time ago. Uh, she don't use cards nowadays. She don't need cards already. Right? Um, so um, those of you who have read Cordelia's story, or yeah, just in case you all are interested. So Cordelia wrote a book about her, her spiritual journey. Uh, it was quite a, a harrowing one. Uh, she got possessed. That's why the book is called Possessed from Darkness to Light by Cordelia Lee. Me, uh, available on Amazon and also Google Play Store if you are interested in ebook. Um, the paperback is available on Amazon. You can contact us for a copy if you are in Malaysia. So um, basically, uh, in the story also, Cordelia mentioned that how after she got um, got through the possession and the black magic experience, um, you know, she started to learn how she be, you know, and uh, she practiced. She still her mind, and one of the things she did was uh, do oracle card readings. All right, so um, yeah, she's been doing this for a long time. She don't need it now. Uh, myself, I don't do so much. Uh, yeah. But can I do Oracle cards reading? Yes. Okay, I still can do. Just that uh, nowadays we don't do that much. We, we don't advertise. You know, we don't, you know, yeah, we don't end up uh, saying a lot. Uh, this is just, uh, yeah, um, just to share with you all that we do. All right. Um, yeah. I actually did think, you know, uh, if I talk about tarot cards, you know, end up a lot of people kind of look me up for a tarot card reading. All right. Um, but um, yeah, we are not say, um, just to share with you all, uh, I've, I've not done oracle card reading for a lot of time. Um, 
for some time. Still can do, all right. The, the things are all the same. It's just that we choose not to focus on this. We can, we've got other better things to do. Usually, uh, most of us, uh, most of the people, they come and look for us for energy healings, energy readings, and also spiritual healing. So we do, um, we help people deal with like evil spirits, black magic, this kind of stuff. So um, uh, those are the kind of stuff that we can do that other people cannot do. So oracle cards, um, a lot of people do oracle cards. So that's why we choose not to focus on it. We spend most of our time doing things that other people can't do. Okay. Um, so, um, John is asking, is it all right to give away decks of cards to other people of tar tarot, which we no longer use, perhaps as time buys, there is no longer affinity to card. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to give, right? Um, now the main thing is whether the person wants to, to, to accept, right? See whether the person wants to accept. So, um, someone private message me, let me just give a private message, uh, reply. Um, Okay, um, there's someone who gave me a private message, I just gave you a reply, okay? So, yes, um, are there any more questions? Just nice, about one hour. So, about tarot cards and oracle cards. No, I hope I'm able to answer all your questions. All right, um, if you have uh, private questions, uh, you guys know how to get me, you can message me and um, if you all feel that you gain some value, please uh, feel free to contribute and make a donation and support us for our donation basis sessions. It's free. If you cannot afford it, that's totally fine. All right. Um, I hope you all have learned something tonight and I hope to see you all again. Tomorrow, we have a session on Unity Qigong. All right. Um, same time, just that um, it's Sunday night. So tomorrow is Sunday night in Malaysia, 9 p.m. All right. Thank you for having me and hope to see you all again. See you all next session. Goodbye.